So bringing two ideas together, the Pythagorean identity and reciprocal trig function. So there's the Pythagorean identity. Let's use it to solve something like this. If cosec x equals 7 on 4, find cos x. Okay, what's cosec x? Well, cosec, cosec x, right, is equal to 1 on sin x. And that's useful information because if cosec x equals 7 on 4, then sin x equals 1 on that. Um, which means that, therefore, sin x equals 1 on 7 on 4, which is 4 on 7. They're going to be reciprocals of each other. And uh, if we had sec x, that would be the reciprocal of cos x, etc., etc. Okay, so now what can we do to find cos x? Well, I can use my friend the Pythagorean identity, and I can say that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And I know that sine x equals 4 on 7. So sine x squared is 4 on 7 squared plus cos squared x equals 1. Now that means that 1 minus 4 on 7 squared, which is 16 on 49, equals cos squared x. Now subtracting those two, we're going to get uh, 33 over 49 equals cos squared x. And finally, that means that cos x, which is what we came here for in the first place, is the square root of 33 over 49 plus or minus, uh, which I guess we should probably go one step further and say that that's the square root of 33 over 7. So, if cosec x equals 7 on 4, sine x equals 4 on 7, which is the reciprocal, and then we can use Pythagoras' theorem to say that cos x is equal to plus or minus root 33 on 7. A second example, very, very similar, but with this domain in the middle, which is going to narrow down our final solution at the bottom. Uh, so we know that sec x is equal to negative 3 on 2, and we're trying to find sine x. So first of all, if sec x equals negative 3 on 2, cos x equals 2 on 3, negative, right? Um, that's because they're reciprocals, reciprocal. Okay, now what we can do? Pythagoras' theorem, we know that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. You know, I'll probably pause here for a minute, and you'd probably think, well, how come he's just jumping to the Pythagorean theorem? Well, I know cos x, I want to know sine x. If that's the case, the Pythagorean identity, because those two link each other, then this is a, is a good way to think about it. Okay, so uh, cos squared x, we have negative 2 on 3 squared plus sine squared x equals 1. Now that's going to be 1. Uh, negative 2 on 3 squared is going to be positive, positive 4 on 9. Uh, but it's going to be positive on that side, so it's going to be negative when I move it over. And we have sine squared x here. That means that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus 4 on 9, which is 5 on 9 which means that sine x is equal to the square root of 5 on 9 plus or minus. And a trick for young players is stopping there, but you need to realize that, hang on, we're in a certain domain. We're in between pi and on 2 and pi. We're in this quadrant here. And C, A, S, T, sign of, of things uh, is, is positive in that domain. So sign of something must be positive in that domain. Sign x in quadrant 2, therefore sign x equals positive root 5 on 9. 
I should probably change that 9. Positive root 5 on 3. Two examples there. Make sure that you understand that reciprocal is exactly what it sounds like. So if you know sec, you know cos by flipping it. If you know cosec, you know uh, sine by flipping it. Um, and then understand that if you know cos and you want to know sine, then you're going to have to use the Pythagorean identity at some point.